Ever since the death of George Floyd more than three weeks ago, we have seen fast-moving changes in many parts of our culture. Latest examples, Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben's rice being retired by their respective companies due to the racial stereotypes those brands represent. And it's hardly just consumer products that are making changes. TV show Cops, now off the air, canceled by Paramount after 32 seasons. A show has been criticized for glorifying aggressive policing. Also gone of the same genre, the TV show Live PD, the top-rated show on the A&E network. Even the movies and music not immune. Gone with the Wind has been pulled from HBO's lineup for racist depictions. Warner Media plans to air it again with a discussion about its racist stereotypes. Country music trio Lady Antebellum announced today they are dropping the last word from their band name and they'll be known as Lady A from now on. Antebellum, as a term, refers to the pre-Civil War period of Southern history, which of course includes slavery. Even the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, is doing a notable 180. Now, when the kneeling controversy surfaced, Goodell was against the players, but take a listen to his change of heart. We want our players to stand, we're going to continue to encourage them to stand, and we're going to continue to work on these issues in the community. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe Black Lives Matter. I personally protest with you and want to be part of the much needed change in this country. Commissioner, even going so far as to say, like to see Colin Kaepernick get back in the league. All right, let's bring in our guest, Aisha Harris, op-ed culture editor at the New York Times. And I could have listed a, a, another dozen or so examples, but do you believe these are symbolic or do you believe that they're substantive in the beginning of something much greater and tangible that's going to come out of this? Well, I think that in cases like this, we tend to start with the symbolic gestures. That's where it's perhaps the easiest to start to address all of the issues and the racial, like systemic racism that's happening. Um, at the same time, despite the fact that they feel symbolic, I do hold out hope that like this will lead to actual substantive change. I think that, you know, there are lots of other symbols that need to come down as well. Um, you know, you mentioned Roger Goodell. Well, meanwhile, there's the, the Washington Redskins, which is a name and a mascot that we have long been arguing should not exist. And hopefully they will consider to uh, start considering to actually take action and find a new mascot and find a new name. Um, so I think that, you know, it's this is the beginning of something bigger. And I do hope that the, and I, and I also think the symbols are important. That is that is where you need to start. Aisha, I've noticed um, in micro levels that while the conversation and obviously spurred on by, uh, by the murder of Mr. Floyd, for example, um, Native American groups um, have pushed and gotten changes. You just mentioned the Redskins, but Land O'Lakes is just a product. But also schools are re-examining experiences of students and Asian Americans are saying we got lumped in and stereotyped. Um, Hispanic students are saying, listen, this is our experience here. Will this be about how African Americans have been marginalized? Or do you see this as being on a broader cultural level that there's going to be a reckoning now and a reexamination across the board? Well, I think anti-blackness is such a specific and very pervasive form of racism that I, I can understand why so much of the focus has been on that, uh, especially since these protests are like indirect response to the killing of George Floyd. Now, we can't forget that before this was happening, back when we were all really focused on the pandemic, there was a, a lot of coverage of the rampant anti-Asian racism that was happening in response to coronavirus. Um, you know, I, I think that Black, like, progress for Black people will hopefully open up the doors for other groups as well. And it's not as though these other groups haven't been saying these things before these protests. Um, I just think that, you know, there is now an opportunity for all of these groups to come together and to hopefully achieve progress uh, in, in all the ways possible. You know, I've been surprised, pleasantly so, Aisha, by not just the typical folks you would have suggested that would have advocated for these changes. NASCAR, 
they got ahead of the Confederate flag and said, no, no longer will this symbol be allowed at our races. And even though the president said he's opposed to renaming military bases, military leaders said, no, it's high time we take off the names of certain bases here, names associated uh, with the Confederate side, um, you know, or slave owners, et cetera. It's not the usual suspects, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Right. I, and I think that's partially what makes this moment feel different. You know, it's not as though George Floyd is the first black person to be to be shown dying on camera at the hands of police or uh, of a, you know, of other racial acts of violence, acts of racial violence. I think that because we've had all of this time over these years now from Trayvon Martin to Eric Garner to Ferguson, those have all like built up to this moment. And I think that combined with the fact that we're in a pandemic and so many people have a focus on, on this and focus on this almost exclusively, I think is partially why we are seeing NASCAR and, uh, you know, some Republican senators, including, you know, Mitt Romney out there protesting alongside Black Lives Matter protesters. So it definitely feels like a different moment. I just hope we can sustain that momentum. And speaking of Black Lives Matter, to me, one of the most notable it's two-thirds of the American uh, public supports Black Lives Matter. That's double from where it was in 2006. So as one of the things of culture, what moves us obviously comes out of Hollywood. There's been a lot of conversation well before George Floyd that there wasn't um, remotely the appropriate representation behind the camera, producers, et cetera, uh, even leads in major um, cultural pieces, movies, television, et cetera. Does that change out of this? Um, I know I've heard a lot of talk, but at the end of the day, it only seems like we talk about it come Oscar season when the nominations come out. Will it tangibly change and can it be forced to change? Well, I can promise you that those of us like myself and other cultural critics and film critics are talking about this all year round um, and, and have been, especially in the last few years. And there's plenty of filmmakers who and producers, you know, heavy hitters who have power, whether it's Ryan Murphy, Ava DuVernay, Tyler Perry, Shonda Rhimes, they have all been doing a really great job, I think, of bringing other people of color, bringing people of color um, and, and queer people and all these different people behind the camera. So I think that like it's already been happening and I hope that now that everyone is focused on this, that it will continue to happen. Um, and I hope that the pandemic, the fact that a lot of shows and movies are, are still not in production, I hope that that doesn't in some way hinder the progress that was being made and will hopefully continue to be made. Interesting conversation. Aisha, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Up next, the day after charges were filed against the officers involved in the death of Rayshard Brooks, we are getting new reaction from Atlanta and the victim's family. The very latest after this break.